Hi everybody and welcome. You're watching this video probably because you just purchased our first class flight, one of the two flights that we're offering currently here at Paradise Springs Winery. My name's Rob, I'm the director of winemaking for Paradise Springs and we're going to go ahead and get started with the first wine in your flight. Um, this is our Chardonnay from the West Coast operation in the Santa Rita Hills at AVA. Um, this flight um, it's composed of what we consider our top flight wines, our flagship wines, if you will, of our portfolio, and sometimes they include both East Coast and West Coast wines, and this just happens to be one from our West Coast operation. So let's give it a little pour. Give it a little swirl and sniff. So right away, um, it has a lot of the true inherent properties of a good Santa Rita's Santa Rita Hill Chardonnay. Um, I always get a lot of like lemon zest, lemon curd notes on the Chardonnay from Santa Rita Hills. They're very close to the ocean. Um, you know, the, the soils that are found there really seem to bring out more of the citrus notes um, than the apple notes in the Chardonnay grown in the soil types out there. So let's go ahead and give this a, a sip. You know, a lot of that same um, Citrus notes translate to pot for sure. You know, you do get some new oak toastiness on the finish, but I think it's well balanced. Loads of acidity. Um, this wine retains its acidity because it, that cool marine air coming in from the proximity of this vineyard in this avia to the ocean helps keep the acidity in the grapes because they don't respire through warm nights because it cools down too much at night. And then it, it'll swing and be a 30 to 35 degree temperature difference and get up into the 90s. To really ripen the Chardonnay to, to come up with a ripe, riper flavor profile like this one has. Um, so with that, go ahead and sit back and enjoy this wine. Hit pause and, 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 and enjoy it until you're ready to hit play and start the next one. And with that, we're going to start with the first one, the latest of the reds. This is our 2016 Pinot Noir from our Santa Barbara location. Um, this is from the Santa Rita Hills, three vineyards, um, John Sebastiano Vineyard, La Encantada, and Sanford Benedict, three well-established vineyards, especially Sanford Benedict, smack dab in the heart of Santa Rita Hills, Pinot. Um, you know, these vineyards are 10 to 15 miles from the ocean, so they're getting a lot of very hot days and a lot of very cool nights, which gives the perfect balance and of weather for the group Pinot Noir, which is very fickle grape. That's why we didn't see much of it in Virginia. Um, so let's go ahead and give this a swirl, get the aromatics going, get a sniff. And you know, for me, I get a lot of typical Pinot notes from Cinderella Hills. I get like a little bit of that red fruit, like cranberry note, but also I get like a savoriness of like olive, um, a little bit of earthiness. Um, very true to form for the typical Santa Rita Hills Pinot. Um, let's give this a sip. You know, very silky, very smooth, very bright with acidity. Um, a lot of bright cherry notes, a little bit of that cranberry note from the aromatics translates to the palate. Um, just a, a very well balanced wine all around. Um, with this, you know, there is French oak on this wine, but the oak is very well balanced. Not a ton of new oak on it, um, just to keep the wine very fresh and fruit forward. And it definitely comes through when you taste it. You know, pairing with this on Pinot, this would be good with like a grilled salmon. Um, a a lot of lighter, creamier cheeses would work well with this too, like a camembert, um, depending what direction you wanted to go. Um, so with that, Go ahead and hit pause and then finish this wine up and then we'll get ready for the second wine of the flight. All right, and for our next wine, we're gonna move to the 2018 Rosso. Um, a little history behind the name Rosso. Rosso is just the red word, or the Italian word for red. Um, you know, this is red wine, this is a red wine flight. And this is a blend of Cab Sauv, Merlot, and Syrah. The original Rosso, the reason we called it Rosso, and it had 50% Sangiovese in it, along with uh, Cab Sauv and Syrah, and that was made in the 2013 vintage. We just liked the name, it was something we were already using, so you know, this doesn't have any Italian varieties in it. We just felt like this type of blend fit um, this name, and we decided to go ahead and use the name on this wine. It is from the 2018 vintage. 
um, which was one of the more challenging vintages for us here in Virginia. Um, so we cut way back on production to try and keep our quality high and consistent um, as we try and do it every year. Um, so we made less wine in that vintage and this is some varieties in, that worked well coming out of that vintage as a blend for this, this particular wine. Um, so let's go ahead and give this a little swirl and sniff. You know, and for me, the Syrah comes out of the glass first. I get like a lot of very dark fruit aromatics on this and a little bit of that gaminess. And then you get kind of that current note from the Capsav um, coming through after. Um, you know, it's it, it has a very fruit forward nose to it. So let's go ahead and give this one a sip. But, you know, these three varieties, you know, we're working well together. You're getting a lot of upfront structure from the Syrah, some good mid palate from the Merlot and Cab Sauv. Really comes through on the finish to kind of give this wine a completeness across your palate from front to back with structure and fruit and just adds a lot of complexity using these three varieties together. And these are not three varieties you typically see together. Cab Sauv and Merlot, you definitely do in Bordeaux. Um, Syrah, you know, with these varieties is kind of unique. Um, and I just, through blending this wine, I think that these just work well together to, you know, give us a, a well-structured wine with, with good fruit and good balance to it. Um, pairing on this, you know, this it sips well on its own if you decant it or open it up a while before having it. It goes with a variety of of different foods and in, in, in fitting with its name Rosso, I would have it with like a, a bolognese. Um, I think this would be a good pairing because it's well structured but it's not real tannic. It's got good acidity, work well with a tomato based sauce like that and that would be something I'd enjoy having with this wine. And so with that, go ahead and pause as we get ready to shift into our next wine. Alrighty, let's move to our next wine in the flight and we're gonna to move to the 2016 moment. Um, this wine has a lot of meaning with the name. Um, you know, it, it, it's full circle on the winery and the winery events and us going to the West Coast and um, has a lot of meaning to Kirk and Jane, the owners, um, how their dream of having a vineyard and a winery has turned into what Paradise Springs has turned into today and how it's come full circle and via the West Coast, starting with making wine there in 2014. Um, and this packaging, this labels, it, it mirrors our Roche, our Bordeaux blend on the West Coast. Um, it's its East Coast counterpart. Um, this is also a Bordeaux blend like the Roche. This is Cab Sauv, Cab Franc, Merlot, Petit Verdot. The four main Bordeaux varieties that are done in Virginia, there's a little bit of Malbec out there, but not a lot. Um, you know, we're just, it's kind of transitioned this to be our new flagship red blend. And it's fastly become that. It's you know, a little bit smaller production right around the four to 500 case range each vintage. And we're really trying to keep the quality very high and really fine tune this blend to really you know, be complex and, and structured well and age well. And, and I find as you get into this wine, you, you'll see that come through on the palate. Um, so let's go give us a swirl and a sniff. You know, a lot of, you know, there's a lot going on with this wine aromatically. Um, I definitely get some floralness from um, the Petit Verdot that's in this blend. Um, the Cap Francs bring a lot of good aromatics to this wine, a lot of like black cherry notes. Um, and then kind of towards the end of it, you get that cassis note from the Cap Sauv in this. Um, so let's go ahead and give this one a, a, a sip. You know, this wine is very round and lush and full in the palate. It's definitely one of our more fuller bodied wines, but it's it's got ample tannins, but they're really soft and supple, uh, really mouth filling, a lot of volume on this wine. Uh, just well balanced. The oak's there, but it's well integrated. Um, and that's important for all of our wines that I try to do as best I can to make oak a component of the wine to add some complexity and structure, but not make it dominate the wine. So this is definitely has a fruit forwardness to it that I think you'll see on the palate. Um, food wise with this, this can go with a number of different foods. I'd probably have this with a steak or prime rib myself. I think this structure in that wine will help with the fattiness and the saltiness of a, a good grilled steak or, or 
a piece of prime rib or something like that that's on the heartier side. I think this wine can definitely has the the structure and the fruit and the and the acid to stand up to a, a beefier kind of meat like that. Um, so with that, go ahead and hit pause um, and enjoy this one. I'm I'm certainly enjoying it, and then we'll we'll move to the next wine in the flight. All right, next we're going to move to one of my favorite wines, and a wine that means a lot to me and that's special to me, um, is our 2015 PVT. And PVT is just a name that we came out with. It's Petit Verdot tonight. A lot of people think it's private. There's a lot of, you know, multiple meanings to this name. Um, I love both of these varieties to make bigger, bolder red wines of Virginia. Um, I think they can be a little bit one-dimensional on their own. Um, but they have their place, but I like them blended together. And historically, this has always been a 50-50 blend of each of the varieties. Um, the Tanat usually is coming from an American oak. We don't use a lot of it here, but we do a little bit of American oak once in a and, and our Norton variety gets all American oak. And the Petit Verdot from French oak. And I just think that this style and this blend coming from Williams Gap Vineyard has just really worked well. And this is our original flagship wine in Paradise Springs. Um, so let's go ahead and Pour a little bit here and talk about what we're smelling, what we're tasting. You know, I mean, you could watch a solar eclipse of this. It's inky and dark and deep, uh, very rich in color. Uh, aromatically, um, I get a lot of different notes that jump out of the glass. You definitely get that true to form, Petit Verdot floralness, and the black fruits that both of these varieties are known for. Um, you even get some good earthiness from the Tanat that's in this wine. Um, some baking spice from the French oak and some almost smokiness from the American oak that's not spent some time in. So all those different components from the two varieties and the way these wines are treated to add a lot of layers to this wine and a lot of complexity to this wine, uh, which make it very intriguing on the palate. Um, this is the highest scoring wine in Virginia um, that we've ever received from uh, Robert Parker's Wine Advocate. Um, we've got 92 points in this wine, which is, is really, really good for Virginia wine. There's very few Virginia wines that ever scored more than 92, 93, 94 points. Um, so we, we take a lot of pride in that. So let's go ahead and give this one a sip. You know, a lot of those dark fruits and all that that we're, we're getting aromatic on this wine, we definitely get on the palate of this wine. To me, this is a lot of like blackberry, raspberry notes. Um, like a plum note on this wine, a little bit of that earthiness and, and comes through and it's not and some spiciness in the finish. Um, really add a lot of layers to this wine and the palate too. Very well structured. These are both um, well structured wines. Um, the tannins really fill up your mouth and really give a lot of structure and a lot of boldness to this wine. It's one of the main things why this wine can age so long. 10 to 20 years in this wine, no problem at all. Um, you know, and it's, it's built that way. We're typically making six to eight barrels of this wine depending on the vintage, and with this vintage we've made six barrels, 150 cases. Um, but just a wine that I think really shows you what Virginia wine's about and what a, a, a well-made, uh, higher-end, well-structured Virginia wine can be. Um, and with that, go ahead and hit pause and we will go ahead and transition to the next one in our flight. Okay, we're about ready to wrap our flight up with our last wine, um, but not least, this is our Swagger. Um, we don't make a lot of sweet wines here at Paradise Springs. This is one of our sweetest wines, along with our late harvest. Um, but still, for a port, and this is a ruby style port, it is drier than most that you'll actually get from Portugal. It's usually around 3 to 4% residual sugar. So it has some sweetness. It's supposed to, um, it's a port. It is fortified like port is with, with neutral grade spirits. Um, so we're usually between 19 and 20% alcohol in this wine also. So that's why we have a little bit smaller bottle, a little bit. This one goes a long way. Um, but that, with, what's unique about this wine is, and I've done this for years and was one of the first people in Virginia to do this, I age this wine and use bourbon barrels. I think it just kind of adds a, a unique note and some extra kind of components to this wine that make it kind of fun, especially on the finish. Um, I 
like port and I like bourbon and I thought why not make a mashup of the two as, as we possibly can and, and this is the product and it, it's our swagger and um, so let's go ahead and give it a, a little sniff here as we pour it out. You know right away you know it the bourbon barrel jumps right out of the glass right away you get that kind of butterscotchy caramely note that you do from bourbon for those who are not familiar with bourbon um you know and it's kind of unique with this wine too as we do like a solera style port with this this is a malt non-vintage multi-year blend and we're blending you know, on average three different years um you know, we're making port every year, blending three different years ports together to kind of keep some very consistent components of this wine from bottling to bottling to bottling. And it, it definitely, you know, you can see as you've tried the different spires throughout the years for those who have been, um, on the palate. You know, as I alluded to earlier, it's sweet, it's not overly sweet. Uh, I kind of prefer it on the little bit drier side, um, you know. You know, a typical port's around 7%, this is three and a half. You know, I think it just comes into balance better and just works better and still has some acidity that kind of cuts through that sweetness and just has a lot going on with it. It's very complex. Any chocolate, this is an obvious pairing with. I like to smoke cigars, so I will have a cigar with some buddies. Um, but, you know, really any type of chocolate dish, this is gonna really work well with that. Um, and, and, very well with that type of dish. So we hope you enjoyed our first class flight um, and uh, we appreciate you coming out and trying it here in Paradise Springs.